In this episode of Sam's Motoring Machine, we're doing the second part of my market look-see video series where we're actually looking at the market in my current place of residence, Ireland. Now before all you Britishers jump ship and skip the video, you might want to watch because this video is going to make you realise just how good you've got it on the other side of the Irish Sea. So yeah, we're going to take a look at the market in Ireland for Range Rover L322s and we're probably also going to get into my future plans and prospects for videos and cars in the future, which is all kind of linked into the same kind of topic. But first, there are two big things you need to know to understand the car market here in Ireland. And this might be useful if like, if like me, you're looking to move over here as well, if you're a British or from anywhere else. If you're looking to move to Ireland, you'll probably wanna know about this first before you come here. So yeah, the big one. If you talk to any Irish car enthusiast, or in fact, pretty much anybody in Ireland at this point, VRT is gonna be a big topic of discussion. So VRT or vehicle registration tax is a tax that's charged by the Irish government when you bring a vehicle into the state from outside the state. And that includes countries in the EU as well, which is a bit of a bone of contention for the Irish government, as technically we're supposed to be in a free market in the EU without any taxes for moving goods from one state to another. The Irish government get around this by calling it a registration tax. It's not actually an import tax, but it's basically what it is. But anyway, VRT exists and it's very punitive, especially for older vehicles and vehicles that are um, more highly polluting, like Range Rovers. So the amount of VRT that's charged is based on a percentage of the vehicle's value, which is determined by revenue. And revenue are basically like HMRC uh, in Irish form. And the actual percentage that they charge of the vehicle's value is based on its CO2 output. So there are bans for VRT starting at 7% for EVs, which emit zero grams per kilometer, supposedly. Uh, and then that goes all the way up to 41% for vehicles emitting over 190 grams per kilometer, uh, which as you guys might know, the Range Rover L322, at least the 4.4 TDV8, falls well above that band. Now on top of that, you've also got a NOx charge or a nitrous oxide charge, which is charged per gram of nitrous oxide that your car emits, or milligram, I think it actually is. And all of this can add up to a pretty huge figure, which I'll show you guys now. So I've loaded up the VRT calculator here on Revenue's website, which is basically a calculator you can use to estimate how much VRT you're gonna to have to pay when you bring the vehicle in. So the way we do this is we basically tell it what kind of car it is. So let's use my car as an example, or one like it in the UK. We're gonna select, my car's about November 2011. <clears throat> it was not first registered in Japan. We have to scroll through this exhaustive list of, exhaustive list of makes, Land Rover, Range Rover, automatic, diesel, three liters or more. A lot more actually. So if, then it brings up a list of the cars, basically I'll tell it exactly which one it is, and this one is the third one down here. So Range Rover 4.4, TDV8 Vogue, 308 brake horsepower, and you can see there that 253 is referring to the amount of grams of CO2 per kilometer, uh, which is yeah quite significant in case of the, the Rangey. Uh, so then it asks you to put the mileage of the car that you're, that you're particularly looking at. So let's, for example, 150,000, probably quite you know, average for a car that uh, you, know, you might be buying at this point. The reason they ask for that is that they use that to calculate the value of the car um, for, the, for this purpose. So. so then the next thing they ask for is the NOx. Um, for some reason, their database doesn't seem to have this information in it. So for each individual car, you have to then look up the NOx figure. Um, and I found out for the Range Rover L322, it's 155 milligrams per kilometer, which doesn't mean much to me, but apparently it's quite a lot. The reason that it's pretty high on the 4.4 TDV8 is that it's a Euro 5 car rather than Euro 6. And Euro 6 is when they started fitting AdBlue systems to cars with the urea injection, uh, which is what actually brings down that NOx uh, level on newer cars, but uh, but mine's just got the DPF. It doesn't have the AdBlue, so unfortunately that means the NOx level is pretty high. So anyway, we can calculate the VRT now and see how much we're going to have to pay. So there you go, 6,753 euros that is payable to revenue the moment you want to register it for Irish roads. Pretty bad, eh? The 4.4 TDV, as I said, sits in the highest band, that 41% band, and then on top of that. Uh, part of this is made up from that NOx charge, so you're paying 2,675 just for the nitrous oxide side of things. Um, yeah, so basically revenue are saying they really don't want you to register this car on the road. And if you do, they want you to pay them through the nose. However, we're not done yet, not by a long shot. 
So following a certain event that shan't be named that happened to the UK back in 2021, the UK is no longer part of the European single market that Ireland is a part of. So what does that mean? VAT. 23% of it in fact. And that 23% is charged on the total VRT inclusive amount that you paid for the Range Rover. So for our example, let's say we got the car for about £8,000, seems reasonable in the UK. Say that's €10,000, so our VRT inclusive total is €16,700 or thereabouts. So now we take that figure and we add 23% on top of that. So that's about another €3,800 bringing our total to 20541 now that sounds like a lot you might say, but we're not actually done yet because we haven't satisfied the customs office yet. No, they want another 10% on top. Now as they're gracious overlords, they only charge this 10% on the initial purchase price. So that's still another two grand we had on top, bringing our total to 22,541 euros on a car that we only paid 8,000 pounds for. So that is one of the main reasons that these cars are very rare in Ireland and very rarely seen. Unless you really, really, really must have a Range Rover L322, it just doesn't make economic sense to import one from the UK. And elsewhere in the world, they're actually probably more expensive than the UK. And so even if you're not paying the VAT from somewhere in France or you know Germany, you're going to be getting a left-hand drive car and you still have to pay that VRT tax anyway. So yeah, they're really rare and only getting rarer. As a small saving grace though, there is 100% relief for people that are changing their residency to Ireland from somewhere else. So for myself, as I moved over from the UK and I'd owned the Range Rover for more than six months in the UK, I was able to claim that 100% relief and not pay any VRT or VAT, which was a huge relief for myself. Otherwise, I'd have almost certainly had to leave the car behind. So like I said, if you are planning on moving over to Ireland, bear all that in mind. It was a major factor in my decision making and yeah definitely something you need to keep in mind if you're planning on coming over here. Now as I mentioned in the first part of the video eBay is my weapon of choice when it comes to buying cars in the UK however it's a little bit different here in Ireland. eBay in Ireland isn't anything like as popular as it is in the UK. I don't know why that is but for some whatever reason the Irish never just caught on to the eBay fever that we have in the UK and they just don't use it basically. In fact, right now, I think there's a total of about 250 cars listed on eBay.ie, and I think most of those are actually in mainland Europe, so they're not really any use anyway. But instead, what we use here is an app called Dundeal. There's also adverts.ie, which is kind of similar to Preloved or Gumtree in the UK, uh, but the main one for cars is going to be Dundeal. So a bit like I did for the UK market, let's have a look on Dundeal and see what the market for Range Rovers and Land Rovers is like in Ireland. But before we get to that, let's have a quick word from this week's video sponsor, which is Autodoc. Who can help keep your existing car on the road? And I just want to take a minute to show you why you should be using Autodoc for your car parts too. If we load up the Autodoc app here, all you have to do is pop in your reg number and it'll only show you parts and accessories that fit your specific car. Once you've done that, you'll see there's a huge range of options to choose from for pretty much any part. For example, here on the P38, if I head into brake calipers, you'll see it asks me which caliper I need, front, rear, left or right. And then once I've selected that, it will give me specific parts to suit. Another thing I love about the Autodoc app is this video section. These are generic tutorial videos, but they're actually really handy and quick to get to the point, like this EGR cleaning one here. So go try out the app and don't forget you can use the code SAM to get 5% off your order. Right, back to the video. Okay, brace yourselves, let's have a look. So we'll put in Land Rover, Range Rover, and I'm gonna put in the same as I put in the first time in the UK sites, 2009 to 2012, because we're just looking at that last facelift of, of Range Rovers as the one that I'm kind of most interested in. So as you can already see, there's a bit of a problem. Those parameters have only brought up 10 cars, and I bet half of those aren't what we're actually looking for anyway. Let's have a look. So 10 cars have come up for sale. The first one on the list we've got is a, and I can already see actually we've got a Range Rover Sport, second one in the list, so that's not what we asked for. It's brought up, a, someone's listed it in the wrong category basically, but what can you do? So the first one on the list, we've got a 2011, looks like a 3.6, it's so listed as a 3.5, but it's probably a 3.6 TDV8. 2011 two-seat business. That's probably confusing to a lot of you guys in the UK. You probably haven't seen that before for an L322. Now this looks quite nice. This has actually been up for sale for a long time. I've seen this on done deal for months and months, I'm pretty sure. Um, looks pretty tidy, nice and silver. It's got horrible aftermarket wheels, or they might be off of a later Land Rover product, but they seem to be aftermarket and not a fan, to be honest. <coughs> but overall, looks quite good and tidy. 
Now, strange thing is that this picture seems to show an earlier interior Range Rover than 2011. Um, it's got the earlier seats that you can see here. Uh, the dashboard looks like it's got the earlier switch gear and um, sat nav screen looks much older. That infotainment looks like the previous facelift. So not quite sure what's going on here, but, uh, but it almost looks to me like this car's had an interior fitted from an older car, perhaps. But yeah, as you guys might be able to see from this picture, um, the rear windows are blacked out and there's actually no rear seats fitted. This is actually a two-seater van. Now this is done for tax purposes in Ireland, which isn't something I'm gonna get into in this video, but basically this is an affordable way for somebody who has a business to tax a Range Rover um, or a 4x4 basically. So yeah, actually quite useful when you think about it to have a Range Rover, to have a two-seat, really nice, comfortable Range Rover that can be used as a van. That's why it's done basically. So yeah, a bit of a strange one to start off. <clears throat> And that's probably going to set the tone for this entire video. Next one down, as I said, is the Range Rover Sport. We're not looking at those. Uh, third one down, rare Irish Range Rover Khan 3.6 TD8 TDV8 Vogue. So he's not wrong, it actually is rare. In the UK, if somebody said that was rare on eBay, you'd probably laugh it off, but they're probably genuinely right. It is quite rare over here. Um, and it's a Khan body kitted 3.6. Uh, probably the last of the middle facelift, so not the final facelift that I was looking for, but um, yeah, one of the last of the, the middle facelift. Um, Khan stitched leather interior there, not too bad. Looks quite clean, but yeah, not not one for me really. Not, I'm not a fan of those body kits. It looks a bit kind of chintzy. The wheels somehow look too tiny for it with that giant body kit on. Um, so yeah, wouldn't be a fan of that. Nice blue silicon hoses on the engine there though. And as you guys will probably see, the price of that uh, will probably blow your socks off if you're from the UK. 17,750 euros for a TDV8 3.6 Range Rover that's kind of, you know, not the most immaculate example you've ever seen. The miles are 277,000 kilometers, which is probably about 180,000 miles. So again, it's not very low. So fourth one down is another Range Rover Sport. Again, we're not interested in that, especially as this one's actually in Northern Ireland, so it's no use to us down in the Republic. As a small aside to what I was saying earlier, if you are buying a car in Ireland, it sometimes can pay off to buy one from Northern Ireland as opposed to mainland UK, which allows you basically to get a VAT exemption. So you still pay VRT, but you might be able to uh, skip the VAT if it's coming from Northern Ireland. So next one down, we're getting somewhere a bit more like it now. 2010 3.6. This is, the this is the last facelift, and it looks like a really nice example straight off the bat. That paint looks really, really good. Nice and clean, nice and standard. There's a bit of a scuff on this door by the looks of it, but overall, pretty tidy. And this is a strange example because it's a 3.6, but it does have the big, later, six-pot Brembo calipers, which I didn't think was a combination that existed. Maybe this car has had those changed at some point, but, um, it was a crossover year, so you know Land Rover could have been building anything, I guess. So yeah, not too bad looking. That looks all right. Um, 128,000 miles on this one, so yeah, pretty about average now. And another slight discrepancy I've just noticed is it's a Vogue, so same spec as mine, but it does actually have the buttons at least for the cooled and heated seats, so the the higher rated seats. But then if you actually look at the seats themselves, I'll find a good picture. The seats themselves seem to be a Vogue model seat they don't have the perforated leather which you need for the cooled seats so again something slightly strange going on there whether it's had a different replacement panel fitted in the dash or the seats have been replaced again but yeah 13750 I'd say it's actually for the Irish market pretty good value you're looking at around 10 or 11 thousand pounds so the next one down is actually an interesting one and it's one that I have been considering looking at myself this car is a 2012 4.4, so it's the first 4.4 TDV which we've actually seen, and it has the design body pack. As you guys can see, that price, at first glance, looks very cheap um, for Ireland. It's actually probably in line with about what you'd pay for this kind of car in the UK, so yeah, it looks pretty cheap. However, as we scroll down, we find out the reason why. In this amazing description written by the seller, uh, the seller has written engine rough at idle, so it seems to have some kind of engine issue. Um, engine rough at idle could mean basically anything. It could mean anything from a slight lumpy tick over to the engine absolutely knocking like crazy. So we don't know, you know, the seller's not really given us too much to go off. So, so yeah, it could be an absolute bargain. Let's have a look at the pictures. 
Like I said, it's got that uh, design pack on the exterior, the nice big chunky bumpers, which I actually quite like the look of. Probably not the best for off-roading, they sit a bit lower um, and a bit, and they kind of stick out a bit more. Got running boards on this as well, we've got the nice kind of satin finished wheels. Rear design bumper with the big square exhaust trims, I think that looks quite cool. Overall, yeah, condition wise looks pretty good. Got the perforated leather seats on this one. And again, slightly strange spec once more. On paper this one's a Vogue, or it's listed as a Vogue at least, but it does actually have the perforated seats which indicate cooled and heated uh, seats. So yeah, strange. We've also got rear seat entertainment which is quite nice. And overall, yeah, it actually looks like it was probably quite a well looked after car until it started having this engine issue. So this is a garage that's selling it. And if you, as you guys can see in the background, there's a few other Land Rover products, uh, newer ones sat in the background. Um, so perhaps this has just come in as like a trade in for them and they want to get rid of it. Um, so, you know, that could be a pretty good bargain for somebody in Ireland. If you can get that and, and sort out that, uh, whatever that rough idle issue is, um, if it's nothing too serious, that could be a pretty good purchase. So one that I was actually interested in myself. Okay, so moving down, this is again quite typical of the kind of thing you're going to see here. Another 4.4 TDV8, Vogue, 24,500 euros. And again, the mileage isn't that low, it's probably about 160,000, 170,000 miles. Um, yeah, so again, description not great, very rare, supercharged 4.4 TDV8, it's, it's not supercharged. Technically it is, it's, it's a turbocharger, it is a supercharger, but it's not a supercharged Range Rover, as in it's not the 5 litre V8. So kind of a strange description there, but, um, but yeah, 24,500 euros. As I said, as we discovered, that's probably about what it would cost to import one from the UK when you're at, when, once you added on all of those uh, taxes and fees. So really that kind of price is kind of the going rate for a fresh 4.4 TDV8 import. So, so yeah, hopefully you guys over in the UK are starting to see how good you have it in comparison to a lot of other places in the world. So we'll just finish this up. We've got one more Range Rover Sport down there. I can see at the bottom, which we're not going to look at. But another, another 2009 second facelift, 3.6, big wheels on that one. That's actually in County Galway, so it's not very far from me. 13,500 for a tidy one. That's probably a pretty good deal here in Ireland. Looks nice and tidy. It's a Vogue SE as well. Yeah. Nice car. 238,000 miles though, so that even puts my one to shame for uh, high mileage. But sure, it must have been looked after to get to that, uh, that mileage anyway. So yeah, and the last one we're going to look at, another 4.4, 12 plate, 19 and a half grand, 167,000 miles. This one again is badged as a Vogue and has the perforated seats and the cooled seats. So there's something really strange going on here. Whether this was a different spec that was created for the Irish market, possibly it was, which could be quite interesting to look at. But yeah, as far as I know, UK cars, Vogue didn't have those perforated cooled seats. Um, so this possibly must have been an original Irish car spec. Who knows? But yeah, overall looks nice, 19 and a half grand. So there you go. That's the kind of money you're paying for this, these cars over here in Ireland. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you guys some idea as to what it's like to be a car enthusiast and particularly a Land Rover enthusiast here in Ireland. It's not that easy. What it has meant for me is that my 4.4 TDV8 Range Rover that you guys know and love from the channel is a car that I want to really keep on the road for as long as I possibly can. It's a car that I love and to be honest, with the cost that they are to replace them, I can't afford not to look after that car and keep it going, which actually in a way is quite a good thing. I can't say that if I was in the UK, I might not be tempted by a L405 or something else like a, a L494 Range Rover Sport because the prices of those are getting quite tempting in the UK now. But as it stands here in Ireland, I'm gonna be stuck with my 4.2 TDV8 quite happily for quite a long time by the looks of it. There is a small silver lining to being a car enthusiast in Ireland though, and that is the vintage tax. Over here, when a car gets to 30 years old, it's classed as vintage in terms of tax and insurance. And that means that cars that are in the sort of early to mid 90s are now starting to, to get into that vintage tax band, uh, which is 56 euros a year. 
So that means cars like the early P38 Range Rovers and lots of kind of interesting early 90s and mid 90s cars are starting to become vintage. So that's quite exciting in terms of running modern classics as uh, kind of a daily driver. So all of this stuff that I'm trying to explain to you guys kind of plays into what I can do as a car YouTuber and a car enthusiast here in Ireland. And it kind of dictates the kind of content that I can make for you guys. Being a car YouTuber and a car enthusiast in Ireland definitely has its challenges, but it's definitely possible. On the flip side, touch wood, we are about to complete on our first house purchase here in Ireland. And with that house, I'm hoping to become the owner of a rather large and rather lovely garage. And it's the sort of size of garage and the sort of size of house and plot that I just wouldn't have been able to find in the UK. Anyone who's ever looked at the UK housing market knows that finding a house with a big garage and a big plot is nigh on impossible and when they do appear they're extremely expensive and hard to get basically. So yeah I'm hopefully going to be moving into a 75 meter square garage very soon which is about twice as big as the garage that you guys have seen on the channel back in uh, Kent at my parents place in the UK. Um, so it's a good space and there's also another 30 or 40 meters squared of kind of mezzanine floor storage upstairs which I'm thinking about turning into more kind of productive uh, workshop space as well. So that, if it happens, again touching as much wood as I possibly can, is going to be huge for the channel and for myself as a, as a car enthusiast and the kind of projects I'm able to take on and then hopefully that's going to play out on the channel in terms of really good projects and content that I can share with you guys. So yeah, it's going to be exciting times for everybody. So anyway guys, it's been a long road to kind of get to where we are now with the channel. We're nearly at 30,000 subscribers, which I'm amazed by and thankful to all of you guys for subscribing and continuing to watch, even when I leave really long uh, pauses between videos. Um, hopefully we're gonna get better on that in the future. I do now have channel memberships up on the channel as well, and I've got a few members on there, not a huge number of them, but I'm very thankful to you guys for choosing to support the channel in that way. It makes a massive difference to me and definitely gives me a lot of motivation to keep making videos for you guys. And I wanna say thanks again to Autodoc for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you guys can check out the link in the description below to get the Autodoc app. Save loads of money on your car servicing, do it yourself, learn a bit, have a great time. Autodoc have been a sponsor of the channel for quite a long time now and I'm thankful for their ongoing support. And so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the Irish car market and the struggles that I face over here. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.